Championship 2, straight from Birmingham in the UK. I am Noxious, and with me Lothar and Raven back from the, uh, I guess, the resting bench. Yeah, yeah. the blue shirt team wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, it's not expected. Last time it was everybody in black, yep. and now not, everybody, not not right, not you everybody, were the only not, one, not and everybody was like, you know what, this time around I'll make an effort and bring something else, <laughs> and it turns out it's pointless. So uh, we're going to be going on to round three match. We've got Ecop and Orange lined up for the next one. Again, it is a Swiss tournament, so a lot of matches are taking place at the same time, and a few players have already kind of uh, figured out where they stand. The first two matches, I want to say, when you have seven rounds are kind of the determining ones. Yeah, definitely because they also determine your tiebreakers later on. Right. It's better to, in general, to win the um, to win the first five matches, an example, or then to lose the first uh, two and then go five two. Because you have better chances to be with the five with a good five two result in the Swiss after the seven rounds if you start five zero then start zero. Zero two, right? Exactly. So. One of the things that um, I think surprised a lot of people is uh, the amount of, like, Blackout, for instance, went zero to a lot of players. Oh, wow, we had a lot of John Smiths. <laughs> yeah. Did you catch that? This guy's yeah, I did catch it. This guy's through. staring it up. He's <laughs> everywhere. Wow. Uh, yeah, the, the score is not quite updated, uh, as it turns out. But it's, uh, <laughs> it, like, we have a lot of scores. I think that uh, upsets, I guess. You know, Radu did very well. He's 2-0 right now. Uh, we had Elki, which Here ended up having a very good score. Life Coach 2-0. So you've got two of your guys right now. Three of your guys, Three I think, guys, yes. are currently 2-0 in the Swiss. How do you feel about I that? feel good. Yeah. I feel confident. I'm vouching that, um, you know, they'll be good. They're, they'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Raven, any expectations that you had uh, that turned out to... Uh, yeah, I mean, you, again, you, you look at players like Tice, I'm not surprised to see him 2-0 so far, but uh, more interestingly as well, there's a lot of names we don't really know too well right. that are 2-0, which um, like Lenoxus, uh, Chimmy, Jacka, like not Lenoxus not is actually, uh, I coach him. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so Lothar's just stealing. He's got four credit. dudes. That's <laughs> it. That's what <laughs> guys it's called. New G2 oh, signing confirmed. Good Lord. Two beers is here, by the way. Yeah, two minutes. The arena master. Is he playing arena in the meantime? <laughs> yes, absolutely. He beats uh, RDU in arena. No, this is just his, <laughs> yeah, it's just his arena score in general. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, makes sense. I'm 2-0 uh, with a pal in there. No, I just think there's there's a lot of names that, uh, you know, it's a good mix, to be honest. And uh, also just to point out, like, Crane 2-0, not a surprise either. So really good mix so far, but it is only two rounds in. We've got uh, many, many more games, and these guys are going to re really have to stick it out if they want to finish on top of the bracket. Right. It's a long day ahead of us, yeah. and we had a slight delay. So um, To say the least, yes. It was a little bit of a technical issue, but it got resolved. And now, hopefully, we're able to get uh, all the matches in. Yep, as soon as possible. And uh, we have a lot of matches ahead, and the players will need to be on top of their game for the whole day, right? That's a long day. It's very draining. Well, it's still not like 12 rounds of card games, you know. It's not round robin, at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the other, 100 people. <laughs> at least it's not round robin. <laughs> so it's like the one positive thing. Um, I just wish the. I, I want to see interesting decks, right? We've already seen a lot of the classes we expected, but I feel like some of the decks that we've seen were also a bit uh, interesting in the way that they twisted the archetypes that we're trying to build. I hope that Ecop and Orange have something interesting as well. I know that Ecop is one and one right now, I, I believe. Orange, however, I'm not sure about his scores. So. Well, he should be one one too as well. It's second to, second round, right? So they both should be playing uh, with the same score, unless one of them uh, was the uneven player, uh, because we have 103 players. In, uh, in I believe Elki was. Elki had yeah, a buy in the first one? Oh. I think so. I'm, no. uh, that, that's what I was told. If the information is incorrect, then uh, you can flay Nimsh later. Uh, <laughs> for the time being, guys. Yeah, that's Reddit's job. Right, that's not my job. Reddit can take care of that, um, so you guys have fun. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll be going on with Ecop and Orange in a moment here. These guys are getting ready. I want to know if Orange brought Control Warrior. I know he loves the deck, and right now in the tournament, it seems to be super well positioned, right? Yeah. Everyone well, plays Control Warrior, right? Yeah, everyone, ex except Orange, though, by the looks of things, wow. though, because on the screen we can <laughs> see that he does have a Druid, <laughs> Rogue, and Shaman. And what was kind of funny is I was talking to Orange uh, a little bit ago, and he was like, yeah, when I was prepping for this tournament, it was really difficult because I kind of bring the same decks to almost every tournament I've played right. in. So everyone will just know my lineup. But the only advantage is with Last Hero Standing and no bands, mm -hmm. you just bring your good decks, right? You know, you just bring what, what you think are the overall uh, strongest decks and then just move on from there and hope it can be enough to power through. Yeah, I think the, the lack of bands is really the big uh, the, the point that makes decks uh, be a bit different in the way that you'd bring a lineup. Because if you get to ban something, oh. then bringing something very polarized like Freeze Mage is you know, something you can do. But in this format, it's a bit more difficult. I would say it's all the way around. If you really have the ban, then you have more freedom when it comes. Right, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> it actually means the same. But uh, 
I, Never mind. Sure. <laughs> All right. It's the old Reddit switcheroo. So we've got the uh, the decks right there. Eco bringing Warlock, Druid, and Warrior. So I'm expecting Zoo and the mid-range Druid with probably what should be a Control Warrior. Um, how much of that type of gameplay have you seen from Eco? Control Warrior? <laughs> I'm just looking at the, at the <laughs> what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, like, I can't focus on this. <laughs> I, w I was telepathically, you know, co convincing him to lean towards the screen. Okay. <laughs> Go here. Come here. Okay. Can, can you convince <laughs> Orange to that. chew? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well done, you Lothar. Got, you, you guys are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, what was the question? <laughs> I, I forget. It was something about <laughs> have you sneak up play any control of recent memory? Uh, um, I haven't really, so I'm curious to know how proficient he is at the deck. But I'm not. Um, when I say ecop, I don't say patron usually. So right. I would say that he is playing something different than patron warrior. Different is usually contra warrior. Yeah. So I'd unless imagine. you're playing mech warrior. Please don't. But that's a your game life from coach. the 90s. I would love it. I'd love it. Uh, that game is bad. Ah. What? I didn't like that game. In the I was 90s, awful. The mech warp. I was so warp. bad. Oh. You just didn't know how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, nothing changes, does it? So Orange going up with the just Shaman like as an opener, stuff. right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you've got Ecop on the Druid. Now, I want to say that this matchup, we just saw it, actually. That was the last match uh, that we ended up seeing was Druid versus Shaman. It was really close, and Martin Creek was on the verge of getting it. Um, I have to wonder, though, if uh, this is going to go the other way around this time. Because a start like this from Orange could change things up. He doesn't have the coin, though. Right, so there's no possibility of first build on turn two, which is devastating if you have a trog that lives through the turn one, right? Uh, but in this situation, the the opener from Ecop, I would say it's the dream come true, right? Because usually you want to have the innovate keeper and the Rav to just kill whatever drops is being dropped on the board. You have the means to kill it. Yeah, especially with the swipe as well. It might seem a bit like overkill, but actually. You, could, you need all your removal early game. It's like, it's like you just want to mirror what the Shaman does. So they, they want the minions early game and the spells late game, and then you want the removal spells and stuff early game and then yeah, drop exactly. into your big minions. Like we saw in the previous set with Elki, he just about held off and then started dropping the big guys and then just pushed for damage so much on there the other way around that it did close the game out. Well, Elki was kind of given the game by the how, how Martin was playing not super aggressively. Uh, not aggressively enough. Not aggressively okay, enough, yeah. that's possible. I mean, we'd have to look at the the outcome, but there were a few lines of play that could have been different in the early game and the mid game. Oh, uh, already? What? Blackout old freed by dead guy. Who would have Wreck. thought of that? Who is that guy? <laughs> that know. guy is a player for. Oh my god, what team is he on? I can't remember, but he plays on the same team as Sewi as well, so there's a, there's a shout out. But I, I can't remember the team. There's a shout out, okay. Yeah. I, I can't that. remember the team name, so I feel really bad now. Big, big shout out to that guy. <laughs> big shout out to Sewi. For he, beating Blackout be Trio. Yeah, I feel like I'm in some family guy <laughs> show, you know, right now. Do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, Orange showing the loot hoarder in the uh, Agro Shaman. We talked. I talked to him a little bit earlier. And he was saying that his list didn't run Ancestral Knowledge, yep. uh, if I recall, and instead runs Loot Hoarder. And I like that. The purpose is basically to get the body on the board, draws a card, no overload, so no drawback. Um, and it's forcing really awkward plays out of most classes. Yeah, that's true, because you have to sacrifice two mana um, to kill the Loot Hoarder in case you're playing a Mage, in case you're playing a Druid, then it still deals one damage, right? Uh, it decreases the armor by one as yep. well. So I like that change. I really like that. The one problem is that uh, you don't have synergy with the tunnel truck. Right, because you lose out on that plus two attack yeah. on the turn two yeah. or later in the game. Yeah, and also actually like late game. I think the issue is like Loot Horde is good early game, whereas uh, Ancestral Noise just isn't. Uh, because right. cause late game it's great because you have that instant card draw, right? And, and you might mm -hmm. need th mm -hmm. those extra cards that turn when you're on 10 mana and you can spend it. But early game, it's definitely good that he has the loot harder. So really, it's an interesting pick, not too common, but I completely understand Orange's logic here. And he unfortunately did lose the Tunnel Trog, but still follows up with Feral Spirit, it's pretty strong. And he can go into next turn with a Totem Golem as well. Uh, it's, it's an interesting choice to have the loot harder over the Assassin Knowledge because it also affects your Mulligan a lot. Yeah. Because you That's have true. two spots that are not being kept in the opening hand, which is Assassin Knowledge, and now you have two loot holders which can be kept. In the so it hand. increases that starting hand value while yeah. decreasing that top deck late game. Yep, exactly. Uh, I kind of like that. So Potter beat uh, his opponent 3-0. Really quick few matches for some of those players. Yeah. Well, you know, if you play 
Agro shop. Say, no, no, I will not be playing. Oh, okay, never mind. I, I don't remember those the decks. Beans. Let's skip the memes. All right, so it looks like uh, <laughs> this is going up bad. Right? Uh, this, is, this is very good. This is typical. Uh, we took a you know a very long break, and now we're kind of starting to recover. But yep. uh, it'll be just fine in the end. Orange does end up having the totem golem stick around. No swipe ends up taking it down. Uh, usually, you end up using that swipe on the totem golem specifically, mm -hmm. which is going to pose a little trouble for Ecop. Uh, look at that. Kind of liking that. the board game. Hmm. To be honest, I don't like the flame tongue totems in general in in shamans because they feel kind of worthless if you're not ahead, right? And the deck is so um, non board centric that you just push everything, almost everything, into your opponent's face and you just hope that the opponent makes misplays when it comes to trading, right? So you probably will not have minions that can be bu buffed by the flame tongue totem, right? But sometimes it works. Yeah, this is a like massive draw as well. Like now, because he's not overloaded, he can play Doomhammer straight into Lepanome, so he can fill out the mana. And Lothep doesn't do too much because he probably would want to play Doomhammer this turn anyway, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. just get it on board. So it's one of the times where you sort of get away with that Lothep on the other side of the board. Like, it doesn't really lock too much out, it doesn't change your turn too much. And the Lepanome was really good at just filling that out. So it's going to be overloaded, but he does have Rock Biter, Crackle, and Lightning Bolt. So he could just win next turn. I'm really interested um, to get the news if Doomhammer will get nerfed. I, I personally think it's one of the contenders because or Rockbiter weapon not being able to target anything but minions. That was one of the other yeah. alternatives. Uh, it's a lot worse, granted, but that like I feel like uh, a change, some few changes could be made on the, on those cards. We'll have to see. I mean, Blizzard is still not willing to announce the nerfs too early before the expansion hits. So, it's still hoping. Is this actually just game? Mm. I well, he has depending on the crackle mana. roll. Depending on the crackle roll, yes, it could be. Because he does have the spell power totem up, and is he actually going to die as well? I don't think it is. Hmm. Well, he I mean, needs you to could kill. face tank the Lepernome and then kill the zero two, but uh, but then that's you, then, then you that is dead, too, right? too much damage. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, this is kind of rough. to just no Druid of the Claws, no nothing to try and uh, stem this Doomhammer, and it's just going to be too much. I think that's so crazy, and this is why the deck's so dangerous. Just a bit of early damage, and then yep, Doomhammer. Okay. Is that a silence? No. <laughs> the silence means it can't come back. That's true. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I have to wonder sometimes. Uh-oh. So that's 16 life, so that's 12 life Need with that. the attack from Doomhammer. Then it's 6 damage from Rogue Fighter, so that's yep. 6. And yeah. This wow. is uh, just shaman things, right? Yep. Druids do get away with some ridiculous things sometimes, but other times not so much. And, and this is uh, potentially as well like uh, a, a result of the last Terror Standing format in this tournament. Uh, I think there are a lot of players playing a, a similar, you know, like Aggro Shaman, mm -hmm. regardless of whether the cards are exactly the same in deck, doesn't matter. But the fact that you can just do this to someone, and then, oh, you know what? I'm going to lock it in next game because it's last Terror <laughs> Standing, and I might just do it again because it can happen. Like, well, it's definitely a deck you can 3 0 with. There's the circle of endless metagame in every, every card game, right? There's the aggro deck, there's the control deck, there's the midrange deck, and somewhere... There's Everywhere there's a combo deck. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's like looming over other, uh, over other, the, uh, other decks, the, uh, deck archetypes, right? And the aggro deck is usually uh, shaping the metagame. And when we have no ban system, um, yeah, that can happen, yep. like you just said. So a good choice when you have uh, a lineup like that, but some people just don't want to run aggro decks in general. Yeah, they don't like the playstyle, and they also sometimes end up. You see players who are not comfortable get too uh, greedy, with their, they end up trading too much, right? They don't go face. Uh, they don't optimize the out the damage output because they're trying to get those you know quirky trades and maybe value removal turns. Um, so the same sense. was happening with the Face Hunter. Absolutely, like, I remember yeah, one that. year ago. Ev everyone was saying that Face Hunter just requires no skill, but it was actually uh, a different type of skill. Yeah, RDU was great at Face Hunter back in the days. Uh, I remember RDU as a Face Hunter player, mm -hmm. probably one of the players that optimized the damage output the most that I've seen. Yep, and looking at the opening hands though of Ecops Warrior, it does look like it's patron probably with that ghoul there, and it's a pretty good yep. opening hand as well. You know, double armor, double armor smith, and even the execute. Just to, because one of the problem, uh, one of the problems Warrior faces a lot in terms of uh, against this deck is the Tome Golem, 
that doing four damage early enough for it to be impactful is very difficult to be able to remove off the board. So mm -hmm. we could see a very early execute just to deal with that guy, depending on how obviously the next turn or so. Right. You can't get greedy with those executes. I've seen a lot of Control Warrior players, uh, among other classes, just be very greedy and say they're not going to execute a one drop uh, against Shaman, but they end up dying with the execute in hand. Yeah. And that's the thing as well. All you need to do against uh, Shaman is just slow it down. Yeah. You, you don't give it the explosive minion-based opening, and then you can, you know, potentially just survive through the burst from spells late game. And Ooh. a lot of the time, if they top deck something like another flame juggler late game, it's not going to have that much of an impact. But you just need to make sure you get there. But the totem gun's going to get dropped down. In okay. There. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm really surprised by this play. No fiery war axe means that he can probably play minions on the board and get a decent feral spirit turn afterwards. I mean, I'm not. He thinks it's control warrior. It was just There's that no he way, had right? rockfire, right? Maybe. I mean, he had also um, the Feral Spirits available with the coin. Which and he then kept trades. the Rock Biter on. Yeah, and you have a 3 1 minion, 2 2, and a 2 2. And the 2 2s are really not important. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's 2 3 minion or right. 2 2, because it dies the attack from a weapon anyway. Yep. And the only, the only difference is like a double whirlwind effect, right? And that's highly unlikely to happen in the next upcoming two turns or something like that. So. I would favor the Feral Spurs in this situation because you have a follow-up uh, with well, that's the it, isn't Abusive the Sergeant drops, right? or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or, or Abusive Sergeant or the Rogue Rider. And in this situation, he just leaves so much it, space open He does open leave you with warrior. nothing but a 3-1, right? Like the Trog would be a 3-1. Yes, that's but it's still fine. Yeah, you, have, you really have to be running into Whirlwinds for it to be an issue. Yeah, this, oh, yeah wow. I think this is nice. For the He's Warrior. Yeah, 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 for the Warrior. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's put it into perspective, confirm, right? Yeah, let's just confirm. For the Warrior, yeah. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Although Orange does have a decent turn here, uh, if he wants to get that trade, um, then he can get rid of that 4-4 four -four for cheap. Well, it's going to be more than a 4-4 four -four by that point. But yeah, it doesn't really matter how big it will be, it will die. But it's really you actually go for the Flame Juggler this turn? You've got balls. No, because if you miss, you can just co uh, coin Abusive, right? Yeah, but you lose the Abusive in the process, don't you? No, I mean, attacking now, the Trog will be on uh, three. Uh, and the play trog, more the minions on the board. On three. Uh, I could see that. He could Flame Juggle and then trade in the Trog. I see. I think he might just up. ignore the... You don't interact with it. What's the worst case scenario? You die. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty grim. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I mean, this is fine. This accomplishes a very similar thing anyway, so... so e cop with the typical, I don't know what to do with this hand, <laughs> patron <laughs> warrior. This is essentially... Global armor smith? Right. Like, yeah, the, like the drawback of this deck is that it does so well when it draws early game, picks up an Acolyte of Pain. Uh, if only that, right? A web. Need much more a web. That. Right. Fire War Axe will yeah. win a game. Uh, but in a spot like this, it's kind of, kind of awkward. Yeah, and there's going to be an early execute out just to remove the uh, Totem Golem, which I think is pretty nice. It also means that if this has been traded into, if the Berserker has been traded into by these minions singly, one of them is going to die as well, because it will get the buff damage onto the three. Right. First I have to ask. Go ahead. Why do people play Palto Shadows? So it's an interesting, like, the card I've seen most people play sh in their Shaman list today have been running it. They run Double Shredder with Flame Tongues and Gilblin Stalker. It's basically one of the most uh, board-centric aggro shamans we've seen in a while. And that kind of explains the Loot Hoarder from Orange, right? It fits into that whole uh, narrative. With the I Flame guess. Tongues? Yes, I agree. But at the same time, Palto Shredder is one of the most awkward t cards to play in this deck when you're overloaded. Yeah, which is why I think the the absence of ancestral knowledge is the only thing that Orange maybe justifies the Shredder with. Whereas other players play both the knowledge and the uh, Shredder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're actually seeing Execute on a 2-1. And I like probably in the rage on the 2-1-2. Two, two, two. I like it. Yeah, and that, sh that shows play. exactly what we talked about earlier, where against this deck, bear in mind, Ecop's actually just sitting on pretty much no cards at the moment, which is a huge problem, but you just need to slow it down so he can cycle into those, you know, maybe if he goes Death Bite into Acolyte, Definitely wants to see an inner rage at some point as well. Not an inner rage, uh, yeah, battle rage. Battle rage, yes. Um, exactly. To just draw some more cards. Because without cards, like, because even though patrons more like mid range, it's still very combo reliant. So without cards, you're just not going to be able to do anything versus the shaman. And the Doomhammer gets equipped, and he's just going to clean up these, uh, these armor smiths. Well, those space convenience have to go. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing a phase shaman, you can't let that thing live. One whirlwind effect is all it takes, right? 
Yeah, see, I think it's the one thing where, like, whenever we've we've all probably been there and gone, I'm going to ignore these and just burst through this guy. Yeah, I ain't never. never worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, it has worked once for that one guy <laughs> who, <laughs> whose opponent disconnected, but no yeah. one else ever since. <laughs> it's the same thing with Emperor Thorison. <laughs> we've, all, we've all tried to just ignore no. it and be like, I'm going to uh, win. Back in the day, when it first came out. Uh, even uh, yeah, and then even it's just since. Like, no, no, it, does, it never works. Yeah. Kill it. A Warlock with Emperor? I can probably let that live. And then yeah. ridiculous things start happening. It's just full of regret. That's all right, I guess. <laughs> Ecop needs to have this weird uh, Harrison Jones and his patron. Otherwise, this is going to go uh, a little a little south. This is going south really Already, fast. Yeah. It's Although, so much damage. he's still yeah, high on help, right? Yeah, I, th I think if he draws a patron next turn, mm. he could look a little bit better. He has Inner Rage, he has the Despite Whirlwind effect, and he can play a Ghoul as well. So I think that could be okay, but I think he pretty much just needs Patron next turn or he's in some, some really big trouble. So it's... With Acolyte of Pain drawing into um, Battle Rage, right? You've got the Ghoul, you get the AoE, Acolyte draws, you pick up three cards from the Battle Rage. Maybe that's enough to replenish your options, but still very tricky. It's just piling. Just the damage is just piling so fast when you count it. Like, just the Doom Hammer. And the rock biter is 10, Krakow is at least 13. Oh. Okay, so here's the question. Right. Do you play boom and attack? Yes. yes. <laughs> no okay. question. I, yes. I was just. <laughs> oh. look, worth <laughs> what do I do with yeah. these boom bots? It's worth, uh, it's worth asking. It is, it is a good question, because <laughs> honestly, it's one of those things where people may think that letting, letting the shaman deal with them is worth it, but it's more often than not going to backfire. Yeah, you have to attack after you play the, uh, the Dr. Boom. The bombs might actually win you the game if they hit the Pipe the Shredder and get some Warfless minions out of it. Maybe a Boom Sail, right? Where are the Boom Bots going to go? And... Ooh, uh, ah. Ooh, ooh <laughs> ah. That, that could, if, Finley, <laughs> if Finley Mergleton comes out and that hero power gets plus one damage, <laughs> I'm gonna feel sad for Eco. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, how much damage is this? Uh, that's lethal. lethal, yeah. yeah. Abusive. Well, yeah. It's Sh should he? So the main question is: Is there any way you can finish off with a flame juggler to face? I think that's the real Do question. Do you think the He's tilt factor for Ecop is worth uh, picking up on? Yeah, Ecop yes. is known for tilt. Yes, 100%. Okay, yeah. <laughs> then maybe it's worth it. I'll definitely give it a go. Looks well, like uh, that's the damage that was needed, but um, the flame dragon wasn't played. I don't know, maybe he didn't want to show the second flame dragon. Who knows? <laughs> Ecop goes down 0 2 uh, against Orange, who gets to replay the shaman. Again, these sweep decks, right? Like the rogue types of, like rogue aggro shaman. A rogue uh, type druid, of decks. Rogue type, yeah, rogue types of decks. You know the ones that burst? Uh, <laughs> Those decks that do those damage. types of decks that deal damage <laughs> to the opponent. Uh, those types of decks. I mean, I, I feel like they're so prevalent in the format without a ban like this one um, mm -hmm. that I'm surprised we haven't seen more of them. Uh, like every single person bringing them, because it feels like the Secret Paladin, the Zoo, the Druid. Yes, they make sense, but the sweeping is less. I feel frequent when you're playing those decks because there's a lot of counterplay that the opponent has. Uh, yeah, I think the one of the problems as well is like if you if you sort of go into this tournament in this format thinking right, I'm gonna build a lineup that beats aggro. That lineup will lose to anything else. A lot of the, so you can't do that. So if, if the if a deck like this can just get one to two wins, it can just snowball easily and just like you said, just sweep the whole set because no one normally builds a whole lineup in last year standing against one deck because it's it's going to be too much of a problem because they don't have to even play it. Right, they don't even have to, to run into it yeah. at all. So Ecov's going to be trying out a zoo here. I think it is a zoo. That's the assumption. Could be something else. Well, it still can be Reno Jackson World, right? right? Because we don't see any doubles yet. And all of those cards are playable in every single Warlock, so... Oh, uh, maybe not. Never mind. Yeah, it looks like... Feels uh, like Zoo. Smells like Zoo. <laughs> wow. That's a Savage. pretty bad opening hand for Orange. Uh, Could have been better, I agree. But it's still... Decent. You can still do a one drop, right? You, you have, have a one drop, you have a two drop, you have a three drop. Yeah. So it's not terrible. But the value of those dominions could have been better. It's not terrible, but that abusive could have been a truck. <laughs> or in this case, <laughs> I guess Orange picks up a pretty okay uh, one drop. If this hits the Void Walker, do you think it was just worth playing Lepanome and? I would have played uh, those. Yeah, yeah Lepanome and Rock Bite guaranteed the kill. You still put a, you still put two attack on the board. Fair enough, it wouldn't have three health, but it means the uh, 
the abusive can go to face as well. It's good to start pushing this damage because the sooner you push damage against Zoo means every single tap is more and more dangerous, like earlier in the game. Right, and they can do definitely it, like... a deck where you want to tap a lot. But, you know, the, the quicker you turn up the heat there, it just redu reduces that uh, heavily free cover and puts a lot of pressure on him when this card's like Lava Burst you can draw for additional damage towards the end of the game. Well, this uh, Feral Spirit's still going to be pretty solid. On turn four, he does have his 2-1 cost cards to play if he wants to. The abusives, though, with the double juggler, uh, the juggler double ping, um, and a guaranteed yeah. kill on a wolf, right, from the egg. It has, wow, a voice color? That's a really greedy play. To be honest, I kind of don't That is this. very greedy. Is it going to work out, though? Well, if you think about it, you if you will, if you will play the Knife Juggle and two Abusive Surgeons, you're putting 4, 7, 11 attack on board next turn. Right. 11. And you know that Shaman has almost no combat mechanism. There are no Lightning Storms. There are no Elemental Destructions. Uh, the only combat mechanism is basically Flame Juggler. And they have to hit very luckily with it. Yes, yeah, so I'm really surprised by this greedy play that doesn't necessarily give you anything powerful, like an example, um, Malganis, right? I would if have understand this, hand, if, right. that, if that would yeah. be a Malganis yeah. hand, I would have totally understand that. But in this situation, you're basically giving your opponent a chance to race you. Oh, oh wow, unbelievable oh, oh hits there by Ecop. Misses one of them at the end for the Lepreno, but still, overall, very, uh, very good knife throw. But imagine if that board would be actually last year. Or last year. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where I feel like uh, he was just going for the greedy value play, which might have backfired if these knives had actually been a tiny bit worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, now Orange is in a situation when he has he has actually less damage than needed to win the game, and Zo is presenting so much damage on the board that you practically can't. Um, you're, you're not allowed to race. Yeah, it's, it's a real tough one. I think with, with the cards he's got, he's only really like a doom hammer away from providing some serious issues, <laughs> even to recopy on this board state. I think you have to very quickly make the decision where you feel, do I need to trade or do I have to just go all in with Lava Burst? Yeah, like, I mean, but, not this turn necessarily, but you know, like he's doing, playing the loot order and just go face and hope he just like draws into maybe a Doom Hammer or another Lava Burst and try and just win through that. Because Chairman, I think so. Chairman yeah. definitely can, right? You know, like it's, it's, if it's going to draw, it's probably going to draw burn a lot of the time. Players optimizing the Lightning Bolt trade. That's a card that probably won't see much play unless it comes out <laughs> of that uh, Void Caller. <laughs> it's the, the bonus. He can play him Gang Boss now. Yep. So trade both minions. You play Implosion. And no, I wouldn't even mind Gang Boss Tap at this point. He's still on 19, and he can clear the board. And the shame is only on two cards, so I feel okay. Maybe it's one, one of the more few tap. ways you lose, I think. So yeah, I, I just want to think? say that in this matchup, basically the only, the only scenario that you can lose to is tapping, right now. Yeah, because you have more damage on board than your opponent, and if he doesn't have Doomhammer, you have a certainty that there's only cert uh, that's only a set damage uh, from the shaman. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the Flame Imp is going to come out for free, no damage taken, but the Loot Hoarder cycling is also a really big deal. Uh, so Ikov has to evaluate whether or not he wants to give his opponent the uh, the card draw, because he could ignore the Loot Hoarder if he wants. It's only going to backfire if there's abusive sergeants coming out, Flame Tongue Totems. And even in that scenario, it's not the worst. And uh, I'll just Horse Rider. Well, it's additional two damage. Oh, wow, okay. Now we're talking about an extra four right now. He will be at 15, and Orn has only eight in his hands. A crackle would do it with a very good roll. Yeah. Would be awesome. It's basically lethal next turn. Right? So so at this point, do you want to actually go all in and a uh, horse rider with the totem? Yeah. Go face? You have to, or because yeah. the flame tongue is... A, yeah. Otherwise, it's useless. That's true. You're not going to get any power because, especially because he traded in the four, the four, four, right? So you wouldn't even need the totem to do anything else. I quite like this. You just go aggressive. And I think he committed to this last turn as well. He did kill off the juggler, but that's just because the juggler can provide so much more. Right. Damage, exactly. Right? There's very little that he could do uh, at that point. So Orange here is recognizing that there's no chance that he wins if he's just trying to play the the trading game, which also brings up the point of the whole pilot of shredder, right? Like, the, do you really need to play that kind of slow card yeah. if you're not intending to trade too much in those spots? 
Uh, are you a better zoo than zoo? I will That's just. What Shredder is asking. I will just favor Wolf Rider instead of Pato Shredder. Sure. It fits the mana curve better. You can and play it. it and easily. it fits the, the strategy of the deck much better as well. So. Is there um, a lethal right now from Ecop if this board doesn't kill? That's 7, 9, 11, 14. No, no, it's not. There is no lethal. And if these minions are left alone to where they can't sacrifice themselves, there's no room for Doomguard. Um, is there a chance that Orange just lava bursts face and passes without letting his opponent Well, he can totem rider? him up because it's only 25% to hit a 1-1 one, one totem, right? So if you hit a... Uh, mm. no. <laughs> good, good on him. Go, got away with it. Right. But I think you have to play the Argent Horse Rider because even if there's... There's only one card left, right? And the two damage might be very important with the next card that will be an example lightning bolt right he i don't know i think it's fine because if, if you play it a minion can trade in and defend of argus can right come something out. stops uh. you from playing anything whereas right now ecop is basically hoping that orange has nothing no doom hammer rock biter no lava burst with a mix of other spells no good crackle roll nothing but how does he win next turn? orange yes pick up doom hammer uh pick up lava burst but he has two overload well, Doom Hammer Rock Biter is six men out of eight. So only, dr the only draw is Doom Hammer. The only draw. Lava oh, yeah, it's gonna be one off of the uh, the Lava Burst kill. Crackle could do it with a good uh, five. Right, he's got five in hand right now. He needs a Crackle for five. But he has only six mana, and this is uh, four. Oh yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah, no. Crackle and Doom Hammer are both outs for uh, for him right now. Lapin that is not it. one of them. And Ecop is going to breathe a sigh of relief as he's not going 0 3 <laughs> against Orange. But he does have to win the next two games, uh, which will be a, a Rogue and Druid um, with his Zoo deck. So, Zoo, pretty pretty reasonable versus Druid, but versus Rogue, it might be a little bit, a little bit more of an uphill climb. For sure. So, and I'm, I'm also certain that Orange will pick the Rogue. Yeah. Right, the rogue with the backstabs, with the Edwin, with the Edwin Van Cleef, <laughs> twelve, twelve, casually, you know, turn three, because why not? Too bad it got hoot hoot. So that top deck was insane. Um, that draw, I think, was what saved the game. I mean, I really want to see Edwin at some point make a comeback as like this auto win card, like it used to be, just for fun. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it we want an auto win card. I mean, if Iron Beak Owl gets changed at all, enough. if Iron Beak Owl gets changed, which I suspect it might like might happen, um, then suddenly we're looking at a really cool Edwin. The, si the, the strength of that card just goes up. Yeah. Don't you think that if Silence will get changed, then Edwin will be will be getting a change as well? Yeah, he'll be deleted from the database. <laughs> like every single fun card in this game. <laughs> now it, it will give uh. plus one attack to charge minions. <laughs> <laughs> plus one attack to rogue weapons that are in your deck, <laughs> wherever <laughs> they <Poison>. are. <laughs> wherever they are. <laughs> wherever they are. That's important. So, the next opening... Wait, Orange picked Druid. Yes, looks like uh, he thinks the Druid is... I mean, it's last hero standing. Um, so ultimately, he does have to go through this Warlock three times. Yeah, that's true. So Okay. Yeah. Save I mean yourself some time. Play the, the toughest matchup first, I guess. Life coach went 3-0 no, over no, no. Chimmy. He has to just win one game. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what he's actually doing is... He, do you think he's just playing a fatigue game? And be like, I'm not favored here, but if I lose, it's fine. Maybe he wants to get more information to see what void colors are bringing in, because that's impo important information yeah. for the role player. That's a good point. If right? there's a Malganus, I need to know uh, yes. in order to keep my saps for the appropriate time. Yeah, I think this is actually pretty good, because this is the opposite of Conquest, where deck information for, for the winner is actually important, uh, for the loser is actually important. Right. Well, that's an awkward situation. Yeah. Um, you know what? This hand is missing an innervate. That's what it's missing. Or well, every druid hand's missing Pick one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he has a half of an innervate, but that's not enough. Well, I'm happy. Life code is 3-0. Nice. Tice is 3-0. Yeah. Firebat recovered from the earlier, uh, the early loss, the mm -hmm. first loss, and ended up 2-1. So despite losing the dog, he's still uh, doing pretty well. So we look here at Orange just using the hero power, setting up for a. Uh, Keeper of the Grove turn or something like... It has like to be Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, it has, it has to be to that. Kill the, the Knife Juggler. Yeah. Ooh, a second Knife Juggler. That is rough. But there's a swipe, so it's still something you can salvage. If there's no big follow-up, you should be in a good spot if you're orange. The problem is you usually want to use the swipes with um, in a combination with the Azure Drake or a second swipe. 
You want to wait for implosion, imp gang boss, really yes, flooding the board awesome. as well. So good point. A bit awkward in this spot. So the PO will not get played because it needs to be kept for a five HP minion or a six HP right. minion, like Druid of the Claw, Low Tap, or um, Emperor Slash Belcher yep. or Emperor Forsen. Yeah. So this turn will be definitely just tap and play. Oh, egg? Yeah. Yeah, egg. yeah, I just want to say you that know what? <laughs> but uh, the egg is better. Yes. Yeah. Definitely better. Because That'll work. It works perfectly <laughs> with the PO in hand. So. All right, Orange still not getting the ramp that you usually are looking for as a druid, but he does have decent cure from now on, right? He, the problem is he doesn't get to cheat uh, with his mana. He has to play fair, and that's not something druids want to do. Yeah, and I think we're harsing for probably going to see a Shredder get dropped down. He's got two, and Swipe just does nothing here. Yeah, it kills off the Juggler fine, but other than that, it doesn't doesn't do very good at all. So you can chain Shredders if he wants. You can go into Drake next turn. Definitely got some options, but still, uh, Ecop's looking pretty okay. I can see here a very good turn for Orange if he top decks a, a Innovate and then plays as a Drake and gets another Innovate. And then gets a swipe. That's that's he has a swipe. That'd be a pretty, pretty nice good. turn. That'd be a pretty okay <laughs> turn, I think. Okay. Oh, he, hit, he hit actually the, the oh, first wow. juggle. It, it might be salvaged once the Haunted Creeper hits the 2 on again. Or the 4 Or the 4 3, yeah. But sure, it could. <laughs> I'm kind of that, that, that could happen. Yo, yeah, I was expecting power of whelming, but I guess. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Now he just needs the last juggle. And doomsayer. Oh. That's not it. Still but that cool. was a pretty huge juggle, yeah. I would say. Three yeah. times. Three times the dominions. Yeah, and that basically removes every single bit of board control from Orange's hands, and that means, I mean, the swipe that Orange has is. I mean, it can do some work, given that you will pop. The, if you want, you can pop the creeper. Uh, and then kill everything but the 4-3 that will be left over. But that leaves you with nothing going up against a Warlock who's got Temple. Most likely case. nothing, because if both of the Jaggers are missing. Right, right. of course. I mean, he already has a 3-0 against minions with the knife, so I might guess that this both of those knives can actually miss now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a really tough spot. Would, would you like to see Shade, Hero Power, kill the 2-1, kill the 3-2, and then... Why not I mean, Shade, Hero Power, do that is, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's something I mean, kind of awkward. Is there not a way you could just wait? It's tough. It's tough because any sort of swipe board doesn't develop a minion, obviously. So he could like swipe the four four run and just run the dog into the juggler. And I kind of like that. Deal actually. with it. You just leave a one, one creeper play. up. Yeah. It's, it's good, but you know it doesn't leave a lot of threat on the board. But also it's also nice to just play a minion yourself. But he would have been so far behind almost any minion he played that turn. Like you know the shade even. Yeah. But like he could have just like PO'd the, the creeper and then obviously with those juggles we've seen just nail the shade. Uh, from stealth, so that would have been uh, that would have been pretty rough, and this just presents the, the lowest impact board on Ecop's side. That's true. And Ecop's hand is kind of clunky. You can see that he doesn't want to necessarily play the Doom Guard because there's already two really huge minions that are presented. Ooh. Huge red! Oh my God! The taps in Ecop are just so juicy. That Void Caller is so su such a big draw. Yeah, I mean it does bring out. Uh, any of the three minutes that he's got in hand, one of them will save him some health, doesn't really matter. You want to get them out of your hand as fast as possible. But the fact that you can trade this 3-4 right now and control what it's going to be bringing out, for the most part, is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, he has Implosion as well. Yeah. If he gets Malganis with the Why not? out, yeah. sure. Well, you have to be careful, so you have to Implosion first yeah. before you attack with the Void Caller, because if you flood the board and you have no space, but wait, actually, it's not. He would still yeah. replace the Void Caller with the minion coming Yeah, in. never mind. He would still uh, be in an okay spot in that case. Now, it's all about, like, do you even want to pop the Void Caller? Um, I'm assuming you do. But if you don't, then that means you're going to play Doom Guard, like, manually? Yeah, this is uh, the. So he's hovering over PO there, probably on the Creeper to get, like, a clean kill. Right. But the problem there is, like, Implosion does, like, less and less. You know, as time passes. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't do as much. So this is really nice because now he can Implosion. And he has, yeah, you know, he got the Doom Guard. It's not the Malganis, but still 5-7 with charge. So For zero mana? Reason. Yeah, exactly. So pretty reasonable. And next turn he can play Boom. Turn after he can just play Malganis if he's still in a good uh, ball position. So Whoa. this is still pretty good. And double PO in hand means he's got Burst. More than he can even handle at this point. Wow. And Orange looks like... <laughs> Orange looks like dead. Yeah, he looks like he looks pretty dead to me. I, um... 
Yeah, there's no Drake draw that helps. I mean, I guess you could pop your own Shredder to find something good, but I can't even think what that would be. You can't pop your Explosive Sheep. No. There's nothing uh, there. I'm just thinking about all the possibilities, but there's... Yeah, I actually can't see anything. He can kill the Doom Guard. <laughs> which, sure. Which, which With... only puts him to three on board. Oh, <laughs> like... one man off. It still wouldn't change a lot. It would help. No, it, wouldn't. it would feel helpful. I mean, you still leave a five. I mean, it would pack. feel helpful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't do very much, but it, it would wouldn't do anything. <laughs> right. It would. It would. It would the thought good. was there. <laughs> it's all that matters in the end. Um, I, I just feel like Ecop with the comeback with Zoo. Uh, I, j I don't know, man. Orange is Druid, just not working out. Which is weird considering how powerful we consider the deck. <laughs> he didn't draw a single Innovate and uh, Wild Grove, so that's, that, that's your answer. Right? But from 16% to 75% win rate with one card. <laughs> yeah. uh, that sounds about right. Makes sense. Right. But yeah, I mean, but bear in mind as well, his Orange did queue up his, like, in my opinion at least, the worst matchup he had out of that Unroad. Right. So, um, you know, he probably won't be too upset, and he knows he can now go into the Rogue match with maybe a bit more knowledge, seeing a few more cards. And worked out what was really in his zoo list. So I think Orange is on a, a decent position. But obviously, Ecop sort of clawing it back with Zoo feels good. And it's not like Rogue versus Zoo is like super favored one way or the other, in my opinion. I think it's just like, I think Rogue can do pretty good, but it's not like terrible. Yeah, it depends on the bills, really. We have to know yeah. whether or not this is more of the miracle type or the uh, like the standard oil with just this heavy em emphasis on tempo, really. And also, even like an early void. Uh, an early Void Caller can be a bit less impactful versus Rogue, because if you get like Malganis out turn five and they have Sap, yeah. then you just completely remove like the, the extra benefit, other than you having to play Sap, of course. That's bad, right? Huh? Even if your, your opponent saps the minion, it's not that terrible. Because you still got it for free, and you had this minion for four mana. Oh, uh, yeah, I just mean like it's, it's not as impactful as oh, yeah, some yeah. other decks, right? Rogue has the ability to just two mana go away. <laughs> and just like carry on instead of that can just win some other matchup. But there are really comes like down, important no cards right now in Orange's hand. Uh, he does have some AOE removal if he wants them. The preparation just came up, the second one. So he's able to handle Zoo's board probably on a whim. The issue he's going to run into is if there's no card draw yeah. in the near future, then this hand will exhaust itself pretty quickly. Yeah, the follow-up's going to be really important, but as you said, for now, he's got all the answers. And what's really important is, that, as you said, like, double prep. The second he draws a sprint, he's going to be very, very happy because he's probably not going to need to use both preps super early. So he'll almost, like, guarantee have one for if he draws sprint by, like, turn four. Off right. There. Get himself back in the game with card draw. So the, uh, oh, this Let's sell Corsair, the go. The Corsair is not bad. Yeah. Pretty good card. Makes it so the blade flurries from Rogue are not going to be, uh, he can't hold it over your head. Yeah. The good thing and the good thing is like no one will ever play around that card. You never yeah, see no Peddler and go, Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> like I should just there. I should just attack face because he might blood cell course at me. Like no one ever does that. Right. Okay, so the framing is still uh, a little bit awkward. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes everything look like we're looking at the game through a window. <laughs> <laughs> we're just on the outside of the tavern. And it's cold outside and there are whispers. <laughs> oh. That's oh, I wanted you to do the accent Your as well. Your courage will fail. <laughs> Your heart will explode. <laughs> Implosion go. <laughs> and <laughs> double backstab for Orange. So, I mean, he does have even better cleanups than I thought in a spot like this. I mean, do you, do you just I, I, I you ever say flurry? I would just flurry, but yeah. the thing is... It's so early. It's early, that's one thing. But the other thing is that your opponent has five attack on board. Yeah, there's... That's, that's not really a threat. Not yet. So, Do you think backstab on the creeper and then uh, find a knife is worse? Yes, I Because then you, you set up for an easy flurry, even if a defender Vargas comes down then. Mm -hmm. So you can deal with the follow-up for the board, and you still draw a card, and just using one backstab and the fan of knives isn't too much of a, you know, like an actual... Investment. Yeah, yeah, too much of an investment, correct. Yeah. I think that's a really good point because the defend of Argus making these Voidwalkers up to four health would mean the Flurry would have a lot less impact. Yeah. So the fan of knives would at least be able to weaken them at first. Yeah, because you just feel like fan of knives, you do take more damage, but Flurry's a big tool in which you can clear a board. And normally you want to Flurry, a bit, like you said, about five power on the board. Normally you want to flurry a more a bigger board than that and try and deal with it. But yeah. we'll see how it turns out. He did get the sprint though. On so curve. prep sprint on turn four feels pretty damn good here. Ooh, and even another Drake for turn five with the backstab could just kill whatever will be 
probably play it. Yes. So with the preparation as well, it means that the Phantom Knives can be buffed up with spell damage with the Azure Drake uh, whenever that's needed. So I kind of like this uh, this position for Orange. Yeah, and the Tomb Pillager as well. A little bit awkward there for Ecop. A little bit awkward. Well, so he's tap. RDU and all of G2 Esports are now 3 0. How, How much? Feel, Lothar. Lothar, Lothar. Lothar. Congratulations. How much are you paying whoever's putting these notes up on the screen? Yeah. <laughs> just, just talk about pay a it. Dime. Oh, I didn't like, pay a dime. Stop it. I'm, I'm Stop sure it. I saw you. It's just a favor. I didn't pay a thing. And just hand them an envelope and say, <laughs> you know what to do. And there's a code for a free booster pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Sounds like a great way to, to market your team out. So we've got the <laughs> film pillager. <laughs> Just gotta, like, get, get everybody on Insomnia's main page. So what's really cool as well is we see uh, Van Cleef coming to Orange's Yes. Hand, but then the arch nemesis of Van Cleef, the Iron Beak Owl E-Cup has ready to go. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see how much Orange may or may not commit to making this Van Cleef huge. Yeah, we'll have to see, though, because it usually it's the type of play that you get and gets better as early, you know, the earlier you do it. Yeah. Um, and I guess in the mid-game, it's all right, uh, but you don't want to commit every single resource to it. Well, yeah. in this situation, it's actually okay to commit it. Right, like because it does something. Because yeah, everything that you will play is actually beneficial to you anyway. Yeah. Because you, even if there will be a different minion, you would still play. Right? So um, it's okay to just... Played. Oh, I just wanted to say what? all in, oh, all no. in. guys. I just wanted to say as a joke, <laughs> maybe it maybe will he value doesn't. the coin so much that they will silence oh. the Tomb Pillager. But oh. I was like, no, I, I will not make that joke because it's everyone will be just spamming oh. in the chat. <laughs> stop talking, oh my God. stop talking, stop talking, Lothar. Yeah, well, I mean, it's on record. You wanted to make a joke, um, it you didn't, oh. but now do you regret it right now? Like, how do you feel about that joke? <sighs> It's a really tough time for me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know what to say. That's it. This is so. Oh my god, this is so insane. Oh, look at the amount of damage that went out uh, just to deal with the board. But look at this! 8 8. E cup. It looks like a. like a mountain giant. <laughs> but he does have Blood Circle, so. Eh? He can remove the uh, the second that part is, of the oil off the weapon. That is pretty. Uh, considering he's got the follow up Nerubian Egg with the Defender. That is surprisingly uh, effective at blocking <laughs> Edwin Van Cleef. <laughs> I mean, okay, he just destroyed a 4-1 weapon. weapon. I'm making it 3-2 next turn. <laughs> I like that. But there's an 8-8 eight, eight on the... Oh! oh. That is <laughs> nasty! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just like, oh! oh we've raging. all been there. We've all been there. Oh, that hurts. What a perfect combination of cards. So you play... <clears throat> sorry, you play Hero Power, Deadly Poison, Attack into the Egg, and then you Blade Flurry. And you can I find mean, the match, right? you can't really kill... No, oh, no you no, don't no, have no, the match. You, you, you yeah, can't you quite kill the, the Nerubian. So there's a good argument to be made for playing it a tiny bit slower. Um, but why? Then you, you get 8 damage to face to your opponent. You don't care about the 4-4. Four four. I guess you're right. Because yeah, the 4-4 four is going to require like a PO or something to be able to kill the Van Cleef. I mean, and then if he does that, well then the zoo's trading his board away. And the only way zoo wins is with a board. Yeah. So Yeah, and other thing is that you know that you will have eight men next turn. To so do if that. you play Azure Drake and Fan of Knives, you will kill the remains of the spider, which will be 4-1, right? After the blade flurry. Yeah. And um, even if, there, if, if um, the spider will survive, like even if it trades or whatever, you just have a two two damage AOE spell next turn. Yeah, ready to go with the with the Drake. So you should be able to handle most of the things coming out of Ika. Barring Dr. Boom, I think you'd be pretty sad. Eight yep. damage to the face. Yeah. When, whenever <laughs> I see the but that eight, sentence, eight damage, damage to, to the face. face. You play too much Shaman. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I don't play... Sh oh, uh, sorry. You I lied. Phrase that. I play Shaman, but it, it it's a Malago. <laughs> yeah, so. Respect. How happy are you about that new uh, Legendary, then? Pretty happy, but I would like to see another card like Crackle, then. Yeah. Not RNG. Yeah, please. Maybe not RNG. Yeah. We'll I'll, I'll take... Uh, it just hits for seven. <laughs> Oh, that, that'd be good. Two mana, <laughs> deal, deal seven damage, overload ten. It doesn't matter because I still win the turn I play it. Yeah. But. Wow. I mean. This fan of knives, uh, this double fan of knives. Yeah. I mean, I'm not next. He's going to go for but, flurry, right? Sure, that's fine. It, it, does, <laughs> yeah, that, it does the same work. thing. Work. Deals more damage even, so. Spawns one ones. What's not to love? Yeah, and the spell Bad. power from the Drake going to completely clear up the board here. Even kill the 4-4. Four four. And again, this is an issue where the Warlock doesn't have board anymore because of these big blowout turns from the Rogue. And this is why the matchup can be so good. 
um, for, for Orange here. And th how do you even fight back? Well, to here? be fair, there was an Arabic owl and it was used recklessly as a 2-1 minion. So yeah, I think that's actually the key turn there. But but then again, like, did did Van Cleef do that much? Yeah, it did. It's it not really even about the attack that right. he did. Yeah, it was yeah, about true. the trade that it has that to be forced. done. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. So. The amount of damage that it soaked and the cost uh, of it was really little in this case because Orange didn't have to commit resources for the sake of growing Yeah, Orange win. was doing that stuff anyway, right? right? And it's just the Van Cleef was like, oh, I've managed to play this Pretty perfect. Much. So I feel like Ecops climbed back with Zoo. Uh, being met with Rogue kind of just goes to show that the, the Rogue choice is being hailed by at least RDU as probably the best deck to bring to the yeah. event. And uh, I think to an extent he must be correct because I've seen so many players with Rogue su like succeeding. And interestingly enough, last time Insomnia was run, Rogue was the unexpected uh, best class that was run. Yeah. Super JJ did pretty well with it. Yep. And He's still doing great. He yeah. made another 3-0 yep. run, and I'm guessing it was with Rogue. Against Spo, I believe. So. Yes, against Spo. There we go, and Orange is going to clear it up, take it 3-2, and finish up with that Rogue deck. So, really interesting to see him just sort of test the Druid against the Zoo, just because, like, why, why not? not? Yeah, I've got well, a game I mean, to lose, yeah, and I yeah, can't do it. I don't know if it affects his tiebreaker too much, um, given that he lost. He went three to two because I don't think the head-to-head -head matters a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Yeah, be, not, not being that yeah. he did not lose doesn't matter too much. Uh, so it's kind of tough for Ecop to end up in that spot. But again, it's still the early rounds of Swiss. We're not quite uh, nearly done actually at this point. This is round three that has been uh, completed. We've got we've got four more rounds for the day. Each player has to play them again. It is Swiss, last hero standing, no ban. So yep. a lot of the things that will come in today are going to determine uh, where these players end up ranking up. We'll be taking a short break before we move on to round four. We'll select the players for the next round. We're not going to be casting another match from round three, I don't believe. So we'll be taking a 15-minute break, and then we'll be back uh, yeah, shortly. So stay tuned.